Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are going to build some small barn doors for our bathroom. So inside the uh, bathroom here we have this little entrance. Uh, this is part of the an ongoing utility room renovation that I put off until uh, probably here coming soon. Uh, we have some, some work to do in here fixing all this mess. Um, and installing the on-demand water heater and a few other things. Plan for this area, I've already put the rail up there, is to have a uh, two sliding barn doors. So we'll have one that comes over from this side, one that comes over that side that will close this, uh, this area and, and seal this off. Eventually we'll have, this is kind of like a linen closet with shelves and things back there when we remove all this. But today we just need to get this, uh, this finished in the, the bathroom side so that it looks nice and it covers all the mess back there. So this is the basic plan. We have this, uh, our opening right here. This is the, the opening into the utility room. Uh, it's about 25 inches uh, wide, and it's uh, something like 80, 82 inches or something like that. I think it's a standard kind of doorway height. And what I want to do is build these two barn doors that are going to slide um, off to the sides, and then you know they'll close and cover the door space. So when they are open, they'll occupy this space. I've got about 14 and three quarter inches on this side, 15 and a quarter on this side, and so they need to be uh, about 14 inches wide so that I can slide them all the way over, and they'll occupy this this whole space. It'll it'll leave the doorway all the way open, and then when they shut, uh, of course they'll close off the space, and I've got a little latch to put on there. So I'll show you the wood that we're using to get this put together, and then we'll start assembling some doors. So I have a bunch of this, uh, this paneling. Um, they sell this at Home Depot, I've seen it there. Uh, the panels themselves are about, I don't know, I'd say six and a half inches, uh, about six and a half inches wide each one, somewhere around there. And they kind of have like a tongue and groove so they kind of fit into each other. And so this is gonna be the, uh, the, the paneling of the door itself. Uh, but they've been out in the barn and they've been used and beaten up and thrown around and so i'm going to try to clean them up first these are all going to be painted so i'm not i don't care about the the finish on them it's going to all be painted over but uh, we're going to power wash these off get them cleaned up a little bit first and then we'll we'll start assembling those so we're going to be using the west force pressure washer again uh, showed this in other videos but we're going to use this to just blow these things off i'll just spread them out here on the concrete and we'll just power wash all these off we'll let them dry for a few minutes and then we'll start uh, putting this together So we got a lot of a lot of shady wood here. <laughs> There's uh, some pretty good knots and some chunks taken out of a lot of these pieces. You know, you can see down here stuff like that. Um, got some holes here. Some of that stuff will be covered up by the tongue uh, or by the by the groove as it slides together. But we're going to have to be kind of uh, strategic. So I think the first thing I'll do. So we've got ends like this that have obviously I can't use that piece. It's completely destroyed or this and so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all these first and just cut off the bad ends. But let's go ahead and get those all cut and see what we got. All right, so we've got two piles. I've got this wood here that has one good edge, so either the tongue was good all the way down my 41 and a half inch length, or uh, like this one here, the, the actual groove part is all broken up. And so what we're gonna do, this will be an end piece that I'll actually rip down to size, so this will get cut off. And same with these ones. So looking at a bunch of pictures online and things, uh, most of these barn doors are, are not mitered on the corners. So it's like a, like a picture frame, uh, you know, mitered on the corners. They don't have that. Normally they're just flat. So I'm gonna run these boards all the way from side to side on the top. So we'll have a one by four running all the way, my 14 inch length. So I need 
a one by four that's 14 inches long. I'll need one there, one at the bottom for both of them there. So a total of four. So we'll get four. And then I'm gonna have uh, one that goes from the top of that one by four to the bottom of this one by four, running all the way down the door on both sides. And then we're also gonna need one that runs from the edge of this board to the edge of this board in the center. We'll need two of those. We'll go ahead and cut all these one by fours now, and then we'll start to get this laid out on the table. All right, so we've got a pretty good start here. Uh, everything's glued down and nailed down, and they turned out pretty good. So we're going to use a flush trim bit, and we're going to shave off all this extra um, because I had, you know, bad edges on some of these boards. I had to use actually three of these boards in order to get just my my 14-inch space, which is just from here to here. So this is the actual door, and this this is just all extra here that's going to get tr trimmed off. <laughs> When I had pictured this in my head uh, and looked at pictures and things like that, I thought, oh, well, it'd be nice to have these nice little diagonals and it'll look like a barn door. Uh, but since these are so small, you know, I didn't realize how, how small 14 inches was going to look from here to here with those, uh, with those one by fours taking up seven inches of that. There's really no room in here to put a diagonal. And so these are just going to be small, small panels. And I think that'll, uh, that'll be just fine. So we'll get this, uh, this clamp to the edge of the table and then we'll run the, the router with the flush trim bit. I've used this a few times. This is uh, one of my favorite tools now, this uh, little trim router I've had for 10, 15 years, 20 years, something like that. Uh, and then this, this flush trim bit. So this little bearing will roll right on the edge of, of this wood. And then the uh, router surface of the bit will shave this piece of wood off perfectly flush with this one by four. And so it's going to give us a, a perfectly straight edge along there. Um, you know, if, if you cut it with a saw, if I ran these to a table saw, it might be a little off. Something might be, you know, something warped or, or whatever. This way we get a perfectly straight edge 
and uh, hopefully that will give us a good mash between the two doors as they come together in our gap. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Well, the SSL family mom had to come out and uh, give me a little help with painting. Painting is not my thing, and so uh, I'm, there's some drips and brush strokes, and <laughs> uh, yeah. But we'll let this uh, this all dry here, and uh, hopefully it'll look a little bit better once it once it dries. I noticed this one has a little bit of a warp in it. It's a little bit up off here, so. I may have to try to twist it just a little bit, see if I can get it to lay flat. The other one lays real nice and flat, and so I think uh, I think that'll be that'll be good. This is really a good job for a paint sprayer, and funny enough, I just bought a paint sprayer a couple weeks ago and forgot that I had it, <laughs> so I should have used it here. Um, the paint sprayer would have done done a great job of making this nice and, and even and smooth and uh, getting into all those cracks and stuff, but. We'll give it a couple hours here to dry and then we'll get them hung up, see how they look. All right, so the, the doors are uh, pretty close to dry here. So I've already marked kind of where the height of, uh, uh, these are the rollers that come with it. Uh, I'll put a link to this whole kit that I'm using. It's a, I bought this on Amazon. It was actually a lot cheaper than uh, some of the other ones I've seen on Home Depot and other places. And uh, it looks like it's built pretty well, got good reviews. So I've marked here kind of where the height of my door needs to be on this bracket. I just kind of, estimated it uh, inside and so I've already marked my holes that I need to drill so these are going to hang just like that and then there's a uh, nut and a bolt that will go through and attach that so I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes in the door and get these wheels mounted. Get those nuts and put them in the rest of these. Wait, through this hole? Mm -hmm. Like this one? Right here? Mm -hmm. Like this, Adam? Okay. Okay. Oops. Oh no! Help me. This needs to be pushed down while I hold on to this. Daddy, what's a router? Um, it's that thing that sounds really loud and spins really fast. What are you doing here? Collecting magic dust. Collecting what? Magic dust. Magic dust? Yep.
So it certainly is nice to finally have these doors completed in here. Uh, the latch works pretty good and they, they open and close uh, very easily. And so I think this will be a, a, nice, a nice addition to, to finally have a door in here instead of looking at this cluttered utility room. Actually finishing the utility room and building the shelves and, and finishing the drywall and everything in there is uh, kind of a next project that will be coming up in the next few months. But uh, these doors are super easy to build and uh, very inexpensive. So one by fours available, you know, anywhere, uh, lumber places that you can get, they're, they're very inexpensive. And then you could use anything for a back panel to this. I use that paneling just because I had that laying around here. Um, you can buy that at Home Depot. You could also just put quarter inch paneling on here if you wanted it to be real thin. You could put half inch plywood on the back of this. Uh, you could do, there's all different kinds of, of paneling and surfaces and, and, and things that you can buy to, to do something like this. So the kits at Home Depot, the kits on Amazon to buy the actual door kits with the door, the hardware and the rail are super expensive. I saw some as high as five or $600 for the double door kits, even though these aren't very big doors. And so, uh, so you can certainly save yourself a whole lot of money by building them yourself. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the, uh, the dual sliding barn door here, the, the build today. And hopefully it helped you guys out if you're looking to, uh, to do a project like this in the future uh, or you're in the middle of one right now. Hopefully it helped you out in some way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.